All right, I'm putting out a real quick video here on making a mold using the Brush On series from Smooth On. In this case, I'm using Brush On 40. They also have Brush On 50, Brush On 60, and then recently I've been made aware that they've got a Brush On 35. At any rate, this is what I call a poor man's rubber in the sense that you don't have to have machinery to, you know, measure it and uh, and mix it and apply it. It's really simple and easy to use, and I've made hundreds of molds with this product. And I love it. So it's good, strong, and easy, and affordable. So I'm going to go through and show you a couple of things here. All right, in this clip, we're just measuring out individual containers of Part B in anticipation of mixing the whole five-gallon bucket here. Um, we've got this part where it's a little higher than the actual vessel. The vessel is a 32-ounce uh, container. And then we also have the part A, which we pour into a two and a half quart tub, which is bigger than these. But uh, in any case, we're just getting these measured out because we're going to start mixing a bunch of this and applying it rapidly in succession. So, all right, getting ready to pour some rubber. Notice the black marks that I've put on each of the tubs. So when you're standing up pouring, you can really easily see the mark that you're trying to hit. Here's the the can and notice we put a hole for a vent when we're pouring out of here you can vent through there and it pours a lot easier so getting ready to pour this now and we'll show you that next okay so he's getting ready to pour now what we do is we put all the tubs together in a row and no gaps and then we start pouring one to another to another and that helps not to spill any if you have any little gap in between your tubs you're going to get some on the floor we don't want that it never sets up that's why there's plastic down but anyway he's just pouring one tub at a time to 32 ounces we have an equal part of 32 of the part b which is the paste and like i told you before mine was a little bit more plumed up because that's what my experience has taught me is i'll have in that can is uh, enough to plume up each one and we use both cans to their fullest at any rate in this particular case we've opened up a five gallon container uh, of each part a and b you're not going to use a couple of you know kit a little a couple of tubs out of this close it back up and stick it on the shelf and expect that this yellow part uh, would be uh, still usable it draws moisture it gets hard it coagulates it, it it's not something you are going to buy use a little bit and then come back and use it later even in a week's time a couple of days time if it's raining in, in Oregon here I'll see that start to set up and and become useless so we open a can we use it that day and that's what we're doing here is we're using actually two of the five gallon kits part a part b so we've got four five gallon buckets right now that we're getting ready to use and this is just one of them so he's just measuring that part out now okay at this point i'm going to show you our little mixing area we got the chair We've got a little bucket there on the on the right side with the paint sticks and then a bucket on the left where the drill is sitting. That's what we spin off the extra rubber when you're done mixing each batch. Notice that the drill is also covered with a rag. I don't care how clean you are, if you're going to grab that gun throughout the day, you're going to get it coated with rubber. In fact, a couple of times a day we change out this used rag for another so that we don't get the gun all covered with rubber. And most times, as you see what's on the right there on the table, those are unmixed uh, the paste part and you're going to find that that is going to that's the part that stays uncured because it's sitting there and you're grabbing it and you're getting it all over the gun the mixed portion once it's mixed it, it cures and it's not a problem so again just kind of demonstrate to you this is our mix area all right josiah sat down now he's getting ready to drop part b into part a or vice versa i'm always confused but uh He's dropping it in there. Next, he's going to set it on the ground and paddle mix it on slow speed. Keep in mind, this is sped up for your view. But right now, it's a slow speed not to add air into the rubber. We don't want to do that. So mix it up one time, the first time, and then he's going to pick it up and literally scrape the sides and the bottom with a paint stick to make sure there's nothing stuck unmixed on the side. You're going to drop it back on the floor again and paddle mix it again. Usually it's about a two to three minute process and you've got a, 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 a pot there that's ready to go and you better get moving because it'll start setting up on you. Here I've cut a paintbrush down and now it's shorter and it just makes it stiffer so when we're paint brushing into that stacked stone behind me there it's easier to get it into the definition the detail. 
Okay, now we're paint brushing it on to the surface of the uh, stack stone prototype. Just going to cover it all. We're really trying to work it in well, get it into the definition. Uh, four coats are what we generally apply. Two of these coats are going to be just brushed on with no form. Then I kind of clean up around the plywood there with a, with a couple of rags, and then we form up the last two pores. Or, or applications of rubber to get it to be profiled neatly because when you're brushing this on it can be really sloppy as you're gonna see again with the first two coats you're doing the best you can to get it to be literally covered as well as you can so I believe this is still the first coat we're gonna do two coats like this and you're basically not gonna see any of the dark stone underneath after the first two coats but then we form up you know, if you look at the molds in the back, they've got teeth, and those teeth are nicely formed because we come by with a, a about, I don't know, it's about an inch and a half of rubber that we actually form the teeth with so that we don't have any issues with tear or rips thereafter. So that's kind of where we're at now, and uh, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, clips of the forming of the rubber and then uh, the demolding of it but this is a, just a quick little video to show you kind of mixing and using the rubber all right so in this clip you we're just finishing up the second coat and we haven't cleaned it yet for to put the forms on which is what i'm basically going to show you next so i just wanted to see you this is coat number two just being finished Okay, just a real quick shot of uh, we've cleaned up the rubber where we didn't want it on the plywood and we're just now getting ready to set the form so all right, so we've applied the third and fourth coat. This is the fourth one going down right now, just kind of smoothing it out. And you can see the form is all the way around it. So we've got this tipped right now to where this part's horizontal of the corner. Now I've got it tipped the other way. So in between, you know, drying times, you got to leave it dry because vertically it'll run. This is now the form's pulled off, and we're getting ready to form it up for the hard mold. But both sides are done nicely, and there you go. That's a, that's a mold.